The following movie review contains spoilers and details from the film being discussed, so if you did not watch the selected movie prior to watching my review, this YouTube channel and comment section are not responsible for any spoilers you come across, as you have been warned. From this point forward, it's all spoilers, so watch at your own risk. Thank you for listening. I'm not blindfolded this time, so I'm actually looking directly at the camera. Not like a very bad first impression when I reviewed Bird Box. That was really bad. Oh my god. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next edition of Miracles Movie Reviews. My name is... You know, one of these days, I'm pretty sure I'm going to know what my name is. But ever since I was, I was created, I... I've got no knowledge of who I am, where I came from, and what I'm doing. But that's okay. The only thing I know is I'm a movie reviewer. And now, I'm here to talk to you about a movie that was recently released, and that is plastic. No, I mean, uh, recycling. No, no I mean, uh, cardboard. No, no, that's not paper. No. Glass. Ladies and gentlemen, Glass. A movie, part of the Unbreakable and Split movies. Yep, the third edition of a, what appears to be a trilogy. Unbreakable, Split, and now Glass. Created by M. Night Shyamalan. Oh my god. <laughs> Some When you think of M. Night Shyamalan, it's either going to be good or it's going to suck. What? No. Like the happening. Oh, uh, it's not, it's not playing? No. Okay, never mind. I thought, I thought a clip was going to play there, but you know, that's okay, never mind. Um, the, gl the Glass movie. I recently saw it. That was there on opening night. Now, what's it about? Well, first off, spoilers, obviously. If you're here already, you obviously know that. Let's get right into it, shall we? And here's the interesting part. To make sure I don't forget about my ratings I give movies, I wrote them down in the world's tiniest journal. Not bad, right? Tiny thing. All right, well, let's kick things off right now. Here's exactly what happened in the movie. We kick things off with The Horde, played by James McAvoy, McAvoy. I'm sorry. I Ever since I saw movies, I just didn't realize exactly. Okay, that's okay. The Horde, a guy whose original name, Kevin. He's got 23, or should I say now 24, split <laughs> personalities. And that's the very interesting thing about him, because with each personality, he's got a little bit something different about him. Yep. Now, he has kidnapped four cheerleaders as a sacrifice to the 24th personality, known as the Beast. Now, what does he do for that case? Well, as he's trying to... Okay, you know what? There's, like, so many confusing things. I mean, it was kind of confusing, but it's all right. I think I got the gist of what's going on here. He kept moving from one personality to another while hanging out with the girls. Meanwhile, David, or should I say, the Overseer, played by Bruce Willis from Unbreakable and that small little cameo at the end of Split. Now, what happened? Well, I just want to let you know, he went off, he's looking to find the Horde. And <clears throat> he's got his son, Joseph, also helping him out with that. Um, but at the same time, he's got, you know, the police and everything looking for him. So that makes a lot of things a little difficult, a little difficult. And oh my god, I suck at this, don't I? It's all right though. However, he f eventually finds out a location at a warehouse. So he heads to that warehouse, fights the beast who apparently can crawl on the walls and the ceiling. Yikes! But just as the fight progresses and he seems like he's got him, they're captured by the police, and apparently someone named. Dr. Staple, who wants to use the make sure that these superhero, superheroes, or whatever you want to call it that, could never be shown to the public by putting them in a mental asylum, where one of them, Elijah Price, who now goes by Mr. Glass, played by Sam L. Jackson, is conducting a very secretive plan. Now, what's his plan? You'll find out. In the meantime... The Horde is placed into a room where he's got several flashing lights that can, boom, go off, and a different personality will take over. David, the Overseer, he's got 
a room which could shoot off so much gallons of water, which is his fear. And Bryce, well, he's heavily sedated, doesn't really say a word until almost an hour into the film. But that's actually a cool thing because he's pretty much sedated throughout the first act of the movie. And of course, Dr. Staples' motive here is to make sure that these people who believe they have superhero powers uh, will eventually suppress these thoughts and be convinced that they are completely normal. Otherwise, they're stuck in there for all eternity. So that's got to be a little bit of a difficult job if you're one, Dr. Staple. I don't blame her on that. So, of course, she wants them, she wants to convince these patients that they have mental illnesses, so they go through a series of tests. In the meantime, however, um, Casey, who escaped from a Philadelphia zoo, um, is like the one of the only, is like the only person who can help, you know, the cohort, the horde turn into like his regular self, Kevin. But there are so many different split personalities that a lot of things just change. My personal favorite was, uh, I don't know, there were so many cool, um, so many cool like personalities that I enjoyed. I just, I actually don't have a favorite. I like the beast though. I will say that one thing. I like the beast. So, after a series of tests, which don't really help for much anything and adds a little bit more to the runtime, finally, Elijah Price, who when he's not sedated, actually, he's not, I don't think he was ever sedated because he's had these counteract pills. He teams up with the Horde, with Kevin, to help expose everything, but... Just when, you know, us, the audience, think that there's one thing, good old M. Night Shyamalan always has a twist. And then one day, as he was being, like, served dinner, I believe, Elijah goes ahead and he kills the guy, whose name I don't even remember. I'll just say he's the guy who had dinner who eventually gets sliced in the throat. That guy. You know, that type of guy. We always have that type of guy. It's all good. And... He helps, actually he goes onto an intercom and convinces David to use his full abilities. And you know, for a while I actually forgot that David was part of the movie because there was a time he just wasn't shown for a while. Just put back in his cell and ultimately he's forgotten about. And so, Elijah convinces him to use his full abilities, which is what allows David to bust down the door. Which I thought was a really cool scene. Of course, Elijah wants to make sure David gets out. He fights with his full potential, and he secretly has cameras recording everything so that they can help expose to the world that superheroes exist and that it's not all just a bunch of comic books. Which I think is really cool. I love it. Woo! It's amazing. So, moving forward, David eventually corners Kevin and Price outside. Yeah, I said Price, you know, Elijah Price. Outside the institution's grounds, and they fight for a while. However, of course, you know, Elijah, being the type of guy he is, his bones break really easily, as you've seen in a flashback where he gets on a ride and ultimately breaks so many bones. God, I felt bad for him there. But it's all good, because Dr. Staple arrives with a bunch of armed men. However, the armed men is actually joining, has actually aligned themselves with Elijah. It's like this. Elijah Price, he's like the smartest guy in this entire movie. It's... It's unbelievable. Just when you think one thing's going on, like they were going to go to the, the biggest, the tallest tower in Philadelphia because everybody's going to be over there. And so that's that's what everybody thought was the plan. But wrong -o. That was not the plan at all. In the meantime, these armed men, they killed David by drowning him. Yep, he's gone. David is dead. Uh, his poor son Joseph saw that happen. However, Joseph convinced the beast of the, the truth. As it turns out, the train wreck, the train wreck that David was in, in Unbreakable, was also something where Kevin's father was also present. And it was all set up by Elijah. And I must say, when that happened, it's like, after his father died, his abusive, like, you know, Kevin's abusive mother tortured him. 
Oh, man. Thus leading, you know, to the creation of Kevin's multiple personalities. Casey arrives, put, allows Kevin to, go, put, to uh, take over again. However, as they were talking, Kevin is shot right in the chest by Sniper. Here's the thing. By, here's the thing. by putting Kevin as himself, he was vulnerable to the gunfire. If he was under the beast or anything else, he was not vulnerable to gunfire. So by doing that, it allowed Kevin to be shot, and he dies in Casey's arms. That's one down, two down. However, before that, before that, Joseph convinced, like I mentioned, Joseph convinced Kevin that, that you know, his father, Elijah staged his father's death. Consumed with the rage, Kevin kills Elijah. Yep. However, Elijah staged that whole thing. Intending that they were all intended to die. His mama was there too. But of course, now you see it. They're all dead. Elijah's dead. David's dead. Kevin's dead. The three guys who were mainly seen on the poster. They're all gone. They're all dead. But it was for a good purpose. Because just when Dr. Staple thinks she won, as it turns out, Elijah hijacked the cameras, had them recorded, and sent them all to his mother, to Casey, and to Joseph. And oh my god, <laughs> the best, one of the best parts, in my opinion, of the film was when Dr. Staple realizes she's been defeated. She just goes out of the hallway and screams her head off. <laughs> that was awesome. It's always awesome when someone thinks they have something or someone figured out. And there's the big twist. That's what I liked about it. Um, so, because of that, Mrs. Price, Joseph, and Casey, they broadcast those videos to the world. And they're sitting in a train station at the end. And they're looking around and everybody is on their cell phones and devices. And it's even on TVs. And the entire world is now knowing that superheroes exist. And maybe those who actually think they have abilities... They might actually do have superhero powers. And as Mrs. Price says, this is the creation of our new universe. I like that. Like what, MCU or something? Except it's like different type. But that was the big ending and that's what I liked about it. And now I just told you guys the plot of the movie. And now back to this. Who remembers my famous rating system? Yep. Remember the four categories. Story. Acting, visuals, and conflict. And here we go. What did I write down for this? Let's take a look at my extremely tiny journal. All right. The story. I gave it 3.8. Not bad, right? I like it very much. The acting. What I give that? Three points. The visuals. Four points. And finally, the conflict, 4.2 points. Thus to a grand total of 15 points and a final percentage rating of 75%. Just on the brink of mixed to positive, but once you're past 75%, pretty much it is positive. So, positive review on Glass. Ladies and gentlemen, that was my review of Glass. That was actually a good start to this year. I have a load of movies that I'm definitely going to review with you guys. Sometimes this may come Sundays. I know I said before this was my Sunday show. Sometimes it may come Sundays. Sometimes it may come Wednesdays. Because, you know, there might be more than one movie I see on a week. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens in the future. I hope you guys really liked it. If you've seen Glass, tell me what you thought of the movie in the comments. And thank you guys for joining me, and I'll see you guys next time on Miracles Movie Reviews.